As a filmmaker and photographer, I look forward to Apple's new iPhone every year. Even though I own too many cameras at this point, I enjoy having a camera in my pocket at all times that's fun to use and provides great images. There's always been something special to me about the iPhone camera. It hasn't always been the most technically advanced camera, and I definitely don't think it's better than a mirrorless or DSLR, but in most circumstances, its technical ability is irrelevant. It's about access and ease of use, along with the multitude of apps to edit and manipulate your images and videos after the fact. So every year I tell myself I need the latest and greatest version version of whatever that iPhone camera may be, and I've never really regretted that decision until the iPhone 12 Pro. The iPhone 12 Pro feels like we've hit a plateau when it comes to the cameras. I spent a few days now shooting with the 12 Pro and all I have to say about it is it's an iPhone. And that's not a bad thing, it's just making me realize that the iPhone camera is good because it's an iPhone. Not because of its sensors, its lenses, or even its computational image processing. It's good because it's the camera I always have in my pocket. But that means it can be any iPhone or even any smartphone for that matter. It doesn't have to be the 12 Pro. Apple's most recent commercial for the iPhone 12 Pro depicts a world of young filmmakers using their iPhones to create movies and tell stories. What I think most people will miss in this ad is that it's not that you need the iPhone 12 Pro to do this, you just need a camera. You could replace the iPhone in this ad with any other iPhone and it will still be just as exciting for creators. I need to stress that I'm not saying the camera is bad, in fact it's wonderful, I just don't think it's necessary. The difference in technical image quality between the 11 Pro and 12 Pro is so indiscernible that I can't in good faith tell you to upgrade to this phone just for the camera. Now, if you're coming from an iPhone 10 or 10R or pretty much any other Android phone, then sure, this is technically speaking the best camera Apple has released in an iPhone yet. Apple is calling the iPhone 12 Pro the photographer's camera. What does this all mean in a practical sense? Honestly, not a whole lot. Probably already seen some other side-by-side -side comparisons with the 11 Pro, but it's incredibly difficult to tell the difference between these cameras. Something that really bothers me about Apple is they will often claim hardware improvements, but the final results look a lot more like software improvements. And most disappointingly of all, the flaring issues from the 11 Pro are still present in night shots on the 12 Pro. The biggest photo improvement I've seen so far though is on the ultra wide. I personally never had much issue with the ultra wide on the 11 Pro, but some will be happy to see that it's much crispier and more detailed at night thanks to the addition of night sight. On the video side, we finally get 10-bit video, which allows for more flexibility in post when it comes to color grading, along with the inclusion of Dolby Vision, which is promising some incredible HDR capabilities. I'm personally not a big fan of HDR video, and there's a bit of an uncanny valley look to iPhone video in general. There's just few shadows or clipped highlights, so everything is just exposed, which feels unnatural to my eyes. But if you're doing a lot of color grading, having 10-bit does offer you more flexibility in post to tweak the image as you wish. I did a comparison between the 12 Pro and my Blackmagic Pocket 4K. For me, it's pretty night and day. The Pocket 4K is a camera that you can blend and mix with cinema cameras used for movies and TV, but switching to an iPhone is a pretty drastic change in image aesthetic. In isolation though, the 12 Pro video quality is great, but iPhones have had great video for years. I made a video with the iPhone 8 Plus a few years ago that still holds to today's standards. There's nothing really holding you back from making a movie or any video with iPhones even as old as the 7. The bottom line is these little upgrades are nice to have, but they are in no way a deal breaker or barrier between you and whatever it is the thing is that you want to make. Like I said earlier, the strength of the iPhone is not the technical ability, it's just that it's an iPhone. It's easy to use, always with you, and that flexibility is unmatched by any other traditional camera. Let's remove the cameras from the equation for a second. Is there anything else on the 12 Pro that I think is worth an upgrade? Actually, yes. I'm a sucker for a cosmetic facelift with technology. I need to be inspired by the tool I'm using to create, and when you use the same phone for an extended period of time, it can start to feel stale and boring. There's definitely merit behind changing up the feel of a device to get you shooting and using it more. I really like the iPhone 5 inspired design of the 12 Pro, and aside from the awful fingerprints, I think Apple did a good job overall with the look and feel of the 12 Pro. Yes, it's disappointing that they're still using Lightning instead of USB-C, but with the addition of MagSafe, which I didn't even bother to buy, we'll likely see the port removed next year anyways. So if you want the last best version of a Lightning iPhone, this might be your last chance. 
To wrap this up, if you're a videographer or a photographer who currently owns an iPhone from the last couple of years, and especially if you own an iPhone 11 or 11 Pro, I definitely skip this upgrade or at the very least wait to see what the 12 Pro Max offers. If you're a gadget nerd like me that just wants a new phone because it's new and shiny, I get it. You want the iPhone 12 Pro. Just don't lie to yourself about why, because truly, you don't need it. My name is Patrick Tomasso. Let me know in the comments what you think of the iPhone 12 Pro, and you'll hear me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers.